So what are we doing? I'm on my phone, but <laughs> back to the hey, hack You gotta focus, you gotta focus here, focused. man. I am focused. You can use phones on train. Hey, welcome, welcome ladies and gentlemen of the internet to another episode of Hype Train, where we watch trailers and get really excited about them and talk about things completely unrelated. Oh yeah. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> and today we're watching the BFG official trailer that came out in the last day or so. So guys, memories, the BFG. Book first well, or the animated version first? Well, um, both well, for me, this Roald Dahl was a huge, huge, I loved Roald Dahl growing up, and I remember the BFG, read the book first, and then our teacher always made us watch the cartoon with David Jason, wasn't it? Yeah, David Jason's voice in it. I loved that cartoon so much. Big part of my childhood, high hopes for this, it has to be good. Yeah, I'm Even already, the, I'm already sitting with a big smile on my face. The teaser kind of scared the hell out of me, to be honest a bit. It just looked so dark, and I was like, are you sure you're going there? Especially when you consider what's been happening recently with the last Roald Dahl remake, mm. the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Really? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Well, I mean, the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory guy got the Tim Burton treatment, really, yeah. whenever I did that. And this this definitely so, hasn't got the Tim Burton treatment. But this, but this is Spielberg, so that's a good thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the things I know and I've heard in the past, people have been trying to get this made for a long time. Really? Yeah, apparently it's like it's one of those like by joint back burner things where like whenever I get the time and whenever I get the relaxation, <laughs> I'd love to make this. All right. Um, the BFG is a massive influence for me whenever I was growing up as well. You know, man, the original animated version wasn't that bright and cheery either. It was like the opening part of it is pretty fucking terrifying. Like, it's been a long time since I've seen the, the animated uh, one. A long time. The best stuff in my memories are like when he's drinking the fizz and the, it's going in the other direction, then he goes off yeah. to the land of the giants. That's, a, that's all like from the second, the, like the middle third and the later yeah. part of the story. The opening part was, it, was, it wasn't terrifying, but it was like that kind of like uneasiness that I exactly that I got from the teaser trailer. I was going like, I am on board with this. What about yourself? I feel like I should have watched that film very recently because uh, I have seen it and I've read the book and Roald Dahl like yourself. But it's proper I've, like childhood I've read memory. a lot of Roald Dahl books growing up mm. um, and sadly I don't read as much now and I probably should go back to Roald Dahl. But like the film, I've seen the film a few times over the last 30 years, and I feel like I can't remember any much of it. So you start mentioning Darkness, it's, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's surprising for Spielberg going after the BFG, because Roald Dahl is versatile, and he aimed for not just kids, but an older audience mm -hmm. as well. He had his... Uh, well, because remember, do you know what Snozberries are? Un Uncle Oswald. <laughs> so bizarre, I'm surprised he didn't go after something like that. And then there's uh, that book, Skins. Mm. Is a uh, mini collection story is a much older audience. We've already had uh, the giant peach, and we've had it. Like I mean, a lot of doll books have actually like have been picked up over the years and done. Uh, well, she recent was probably Wes Anderson had to go with uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox there. Yes, I actually, I, enjoyed that. I really enjoyed Fantastic Mr. Fox as well. It was very very enjoyable. And, but oh, mentally, there's parts of it that looked really uncomfortable. Like uh, the, the the motion for it was actually quite creepy looking. Uh, like there was slight stop motion esque kind of thing that was going on with it. If you're just wasn't Clooney's voice terrifying you? <laughs> no, Clooney's voice is absolutely fine. No, there's like, do you know, like uh, do, the same way like foxes look actually quite terrifying whenever they're wet. You ever notice that the mat of fur they kind of like mm. the, yeah? Do you, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, they can be a bit. They like they do they look a little bit more rodent than vulpine like whenever they're actually like the mats fur. Yeah. And there's like, a couple of scenes now whenever he's actually like bedraggled and everything else, and I was like, oh, okay, that's that's they did, um, a little bit scary looking because of the 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 teeth that they have. They didn't really have a sort of animals of far wood sort of. Yeah, vibe to yeah like, I mean, not two, exactly comforting. Two different sort of mediums to be working Here, this in. This is me, be, and the worst thing is I'm being all foxes now in a post-Zootopia world. <laughs> Which is fine because, <laughs> you know, the foxes looking ginger beard, <laughs> and that beard is just all foxtail. If this movie is bad, it will surprise me because if you think of some of the movies based on Roald Dahl's work, you know, you've got Matilda, you've got Charlie and Chocolate Pack, obviously I'm not going to count the remake. No, nope. I yeah, another yeah, Charlie. But, and Fantastic with Fox, they're all just... Such brilliant works. They are. They are quintessential works of our childhoods, and it's one of those things where I'm afraid. But uh, BFG is one of the ones I would always love to have seen. But obviously, technical limitations have held it back up until this point to really kind of do this, like to actually have the BFG property represented. Because we, because the illustration work of Roald Dahl's books were so important to the looks. It's like it's one of the reasons why I don't like the Willy Wonka movie at the fuck all because. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory kind of kneel, actually managed to kneel down that kind of like the, the world of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and the characters actually looked right in it. Meanwhile, the one Willy Wonka movie ignored more of the Roald Dahl kind of like illustrations to do something different. This looks like it's actually trying to, trying to take the, the, the still image from the page and give it motion, just like the original animated movie did. Well, I've not, I've not seen this trailer, so I mean, all I can compare it to would be the previous one and just going through my mind when I think of the old, uh, the old trailer and the, the, the illustrations and all it was 
you know, looking back now, he's like, it kind of looks like a Ferengi. Yeah, the big massive Ferengi ears yeah. on him. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to say. You know, I've only seen the teaser myself. I haven't seen this trailer. Mm -hmm. So let's let's check it out. I I am properly on scene. I didn't even see that. The word Disney. So, <laughs> no, chill. Is it Disney? <laughs> just chill. Just chill. <laughs> Disney suits everyone. <laughs> it was the witching hour when the boogeyman comes out. The girls say the witching hour arrives at midnight. I think it comes at three in the morning. <laughs> so for this specific? When I'm the only one left awake. Oh, like okay. now. <laughs> I'm actually speechless watching this. Stuff as well. Where am I? Giant country. Ah, uh, we are so gonna get pulled for like DMC or something. We're not saying anything. <laughs> but this is because I'm in oh, Can you imagine? Yes. Yes, I fucking can. I'm looking at it. Official shot and an official shot of the giant. All right, calm down. It's not what I sort of thought. All right. I told you it was what's what's going to happen. Are she in all the secret whisperings of the world? It's not, uh, I can actually cry. <laughs> yeah, no, I honestly could. No, that's actually. Wow. Sophie, hide. Giants. Does you have any soup pies? What the? F He's not the giant. Mm. Yeah, the giants. Yeah. They're just had like they're just gym guys. <laughs> they're Bro, just, like, do, do, do you even lift? Do you even, do you even lift, giant? You know. Oh man, that. Uh, the... I'm so, I'm so happy they kept his you know his facial racket just adorable. Oh, because, I know. I mean, it's his name friendly. He just has uh -huh. to be that. It's got a soft feature, like because yeah, like, the essential thing was he was like an uh, he was like a very friendly grandpa, and like that's what they kind of drew him as. But the, the hair spurting out the ears and the kind of the the yeah. long elongated nose and stuff, just like the aging of him. But yeah, like, and literally, just, I could I could sit and watch that. I could I could watch that a couple more times, honestly, because that was like pretty much exactly what I hoped it was going to be. That is that that's gonna that's gonna be real. That's gonna be magical. That is properly going to be a uh, Spielberg. Magical movie. I think he's exactly but, the right director to be on with it. Like, just yeah. like what kind of movies are coming out that you can take the kids to that both you and the kid will kind of genuinely enjoy? So few, so few, and like that. Like, that is the one that's that parents are going to drag their kids to it, and kids are going to find it oh. very difficult to sit down through. And at a specific, at a specific age, they're going to be finding it very difficult to sit down through, but they'll remember watching this. I honestly, I honestly, like, I'm predicting that now. That looks absolutely fucking gorgeous. I hate used to I literally am sitting here and it feels like I'm dead inside. <laughs> because you don't believe, because you, <laughs> you're not feeling the same thing we're feeling for. You're not feeling the same thing. Uh, I mean, I can appreciate what you're feeling, but it's just, it's not hitting me, right? It's not hitting me there. I mean, I feel like this is like a prequel to Warcraft or something. Uh, so you're not really getting the context for it? No, uh, and I, that's, why I hate my, that's why I hate my memory and stuff, because it's like, I'm pretty sure if I could remember this stuff more, it would yeah, help me. But, well, you know. Well, well, that was such a big part of my childhood growing up, and... Kind of, kind of guy who I genuinely wanted to read, you know, and mm. then the likes of that cartoon when I was growing up were a big part of me. It's yeah, it's the same as like the the snowman at Christmas, the BFG at <laughs> Easter, you know, that kind of fucking thing. It was, it's like a set time of the year that I've watched, probably watched that movie that many fucking times. When was that film out actually? Oof. Would have been eighty. No, 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 no sorry, sorry. Um, when is this? When's the uh, oh, new one? It's uh, July or something. July, yeah. Really, July? Yeah, it's it's going it's going to be a, a summer it's a summer family release. I have summer tech kids out to go skate. Mm -hmm. Is that it's, uh, for summer scheme kids? 
Well, yeah, fair enough, okay, it would, it would definitely work for summer scheme kids and all that, but it, it's sort of the music and the vibe and even just the it's lights. Got music. Oh, it's got a musical kind of vibe me, as well. For me, it's, it's for the, like the tree there, it, for me it's sort of, it almost gives it more of a Christmas vibe to me. Yeah, I can imagine, because BFG's definitely been one of those movies that gets shown at Christmas a lot on like, on like ITV2 kind that of thing. That very well could be where I'm getting that vibe from. It, it, it definitely would have been one of those like regularly shown on TV at Christmas kind of movies. But it, the movie itself doesn't is it isn't a Christmassy kind of film. I can't but remember the last time I saw the original. The last time I would have saw the original would have probably been. I, 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 you know what? I honestly, I specifically pulled it out for my brother to show to his daughters. That's that, that that's actually like I had to specifically go and find a copy of it for him to show to his kids because he was actually asking me for like old animated films to show to the kids, and I was like, about American Tale and mm. the second one, Five Goes West, and. Um, Oh, the Anastasia and um, <laughs> I did I did say to him Secret of Nymph and I was like realizing like that's actually a little bit scary. <laughs> Secret of Nymph is actually quite, quite scary in parts of it. Uh, the best offer I've seen this was in the Daily Mirror years ago and I sent off for it. They were sending away like free audio audio CDs of all rolled out. Audio books of rolled out. So, so I still have them complete with. And including a sheet with temporary tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> James and Jay and Peach. <laughs> 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 yeah, check out my Peach, baby. I love how times have changed. That, that was the most badass sort of tat <laughs> fake tattoo thing. Now. I mean, like now it's probably like you know a plate and it'll be dust or whatever. But oh, that's the most badass thing. Now it's now it's uh, fucking. Oh no! You, you, no, 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 no they actually give you like a nose ring that you pierce yourself <laughs> with. <laughs> but this, you know? this is the time for Roald Dahl. Well, the likes of the Mattel musical happening in London and. Yeah, all the rest. It's true. Um, do you know what? Actually, like, I fall in love with Mara Wilson. As, as one of those like, internet people that you just kind of like follow around. I'm like, well, this, I'm one step down from a stalker. This, this film, <laughs> I swear to God, this this film is probably it's gonna yeah, it's aiming. I mean, it's for kids, but it's aiming. It's gonna hit the, the adults, the thirty pluses. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be people our age that actually have kids of their own. They're actually gonna drag their kids. Yeah, I'm gonna to I'm that gonna, movie. Like, kids are not gonna have a clue. I'm about how good it's going to be. I'm going to feel strange going to see it without any kids. <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow someone's kid? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Like, rent your kids to Ryan. Um, I've got nieces and nephews, so I'm covered. I'm good. I'm all. I'm going to be fine. And I have nieces, but I'm not going to take them well, to this. I'm going to try to get them into the Marvel and that sort of thing. Well, my brother only got married about three weeks ago. I don't have time to wait for <laughs> I don't have time to wait for them to get, get them ready, making kids right now. I'm, I'm, not, sure, I'm sure you can just go to an orphanage and rent them, can't you? I rent them by the hour. Well, I mean, you can, you can take them for a test drive at least. I mean, for like three hours just to watch a movie. Or maybe maybe see it twice. Or go I wanna give, give them a chance to remember. Or, or go go on BFG and like literally steal them out of a fucking orphanage or something. <laughs> That's exactly it worked out, it worked reasonably well for him. Yeah. <laughs> That is, a, that is a terrifying opening sequence. That just, was like, is. coming in for me. Like that's why I said. That's why I said. Like you know. Oh yeah, sure. It's, it's like, not Burton. <laughs> yeah, because it looks like you. It did look like, really creepy. It's like do you remember in the Sixth Sense? He says, "Have you ever tried talking to the ghost? Maybe they want your help." It's like fair enough. And the first ghost he decides to talk to is the one who appears on stage puking like crazy. <laughs> is, that the, is that the best way to ask for someone's help? You know. Yeah, exactly. You know, the one the ones that actually are trying to say say something but actually have no capability to do so. Like, the BFG thing was actually like it's written. Even whenever I remember from the book. It's written as being a very scary event until he finally talks to her. Like it's all, it's uh, like it's uh, the fear is actually in the unknown rather than actually like just been communicating at all. And then they become best of friends. It's like when you see that adorable grandpa face. Yeah, grandpa face. But yeah, you, like, you're right about the whole Ferengi kind of ear thing. Like, in the cartoon version, they actually pronounced those ears a lot bigger. They actually had like the, yeah, they, they, they actually literally flapped. It just seems like a really big. It's just the giant, mm -hmm. um, and you start getting all really nostalgia and emotional here, and I'm I'm all like, fuck, he can fairly move for a really big giant. He's got that sort of Godzilla thing about him. It's like, the big how the fuck twice. do you not hear this guy? I mean, you saw that where he was on the street and the guy no, looks up. No, the guy, don't, the guy don't turned give around. That, don't give me the light thing because he went all ninja and he hid behind the light. He covered the light and yeah, he hid himself within the sh within the shadows. Well, he's not a teeny smidge of hurdle, but damn it, he fucking just he zoomed across that highway. Yeah, and man. Those trees like bent with the wind force. You could hear that, not a fucking. To be fair, if he was. Yeah, that's a windy. But night. it seems to be said in the past. I was going to say, if he was in London or somewhere, you would just mistake him for some sort of artistic modern day sculpture. <laughs> <or something. laughs> well, that's the thing, because well, we all grew well, up with Roald Dahl. Oh, like, Roald, that's what Roald Dahl was doing, he was just making us used to the giants without even telling us. Like, oh, I see Damien Hurst put up a new sculpture. <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. know. See that? I mean, you know that's not Damien Hurst. It doesn't have 14 millions worth of diamonds <laughs> crossing into its knob. <laughs> <laughs> Big friendly knob. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. The big friend that oh, never mind. No, 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 no. And it's definitely not the, the BFG that everyone knows from Doom. 
just to, just to tie into that. <laughs> oh word. fuck! That, that pissed me off whenever I first, I first saw people watching the trailer for it because they didn't know the big friendly giant at all. Like I, the BFG didn't even have the gun from Doom. I was like, I thought you were joking. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna. <laughs> you, 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 you ever watch? Uh, you ever seen the movie uh, Hackers? Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's, 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 yeah, there's a scene that whenever Matthew Lairds is like, I wanna hit you. <laughs> like he kind of says it, the moves like. I'm restraining myself so fucking hard. <laughs> like as soon as I heard somebody saying that, I was like, I was like had that level of rage just rise for about eight seconds. I'm like, right, I can understand. Roald Dahl being a really, really popular UK author, maybe not so much in the States or in Asia or anywhere else. Like, a worldwide author, but probably not that as prevalent as in childhood as ours would have been. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, sure. You know, it's definitely uh, as far as I'd be concerned, it would definitely be uh, a huge UK influence because even huge school, for, for child, like, these, even, guys, these are shove these books into our faces. Was, yeah, uh, he would have popularity like, in the likes of American stuff, but they just wouldn't know who he is. I mean, yeah. And, and they wouldn't. They wouldn't know the character. Well, actually, Matilda and Charlie Jack would be a huge success in yeah. America. But, but they don't know the context of their writers. Yeah. They assume it was written by script writers or Hollywood writers. Same with Jim Jones. I mean, that was actually was it directed by Andy Vito that one. Or Vito did direct just... Matilda. Yes, he did. And appeared in it. Hmm. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, he was the father. Yeah, and I remember one of my best moments watching that movie is uh, Matilda's wee brother. He's got an Undertaker T-shirt. Nice little touch. I love how we tie everything back to wrestling. It's brilliant. Oh, oh wow. God! Right, so that's what you tell us that we need to actually stop actually recording. Um, <laughs> uh, such such as life, you know. Such as life, life, life sadly gets in the way. So um, yeah, the BFG. So happy to actually be checking it out. Um, so excited to actually see it whenever it comes out in July. Go take your kids, take your family's kids, take your neighbors' kids, take, take the, anyone's take kids. the fucking dog, take everybody. Go and see oh, the BFG. Oh, a oh, few me streaming. I'm gonna. I probably won't see this in, in the cinema. I'll probably stream it or something. Whenever Maybe it comes out officially. Yeah. Especially, yeah, of course, of course, you know. I mean, why, why else would I, you know, stream all their stuff? Uh, yeah, you see, sure, like, you know, yeah, I mean, whatever it's on like Netflix, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Netflix. Yeah, yeah you, you, you use your iTunes store, you yeah, would buy it out of that. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. But for me, Amazon Prime, it's, it's, just for good measure, get it all. Well, oh, yeah, get all the cover card thing, make sure that we're not yeah, that yeah, specific. Uh, no TV or whatever. Um, but for me, I'm not. I probably won't see it in the cinema. I'm. I'm so fucking seeing that in the cinema. And I, you know, like literally, I'll be like, I'll, do you know whenever you see the line of kids? I'll be the guy who's going, get out of the way! Just like <laughs> swiping kids out of the way. I'll be. I will be the big friendly giant. But I'll be one of those things where I'll be swatting the children left and right, just move them out of the way as I move through. So, actually, go inside and watch my movie. Less emphasis on the friendly part. Yes. Ah, big fucking giant. Okay, fine, close enough. <laughs> You used to, you know what? You used to go together. You take, uh, you said you have a niece or a nephew or something. <laughs> For, you, you could be like, a, you know, a couple and get in that way. <laughs> we're taking our modern we're taking society. Our, we're yeah, exactly. Family. We call it. You get the three kids for free and yep. the two parents, and actually we get a family ticket. Family did. Yeah, yeah family just sorted. We get a free popcorn and juice to go along with it, and we'll probably get a news report on it because it's Northern Ireland. They think yeah. it's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds about right. Oh my God, an amazing family decided to go to the cinema. Like, let's have an interview with you. <laughs> How do you feel about being a non-traditional family? We love Roald Dahl. <laughs> <laughs> Roald Dahl taught us everything that we know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, honestly, you never heard the thing about the Les Nosberries. Then, then, then they'll just tackle Roald just Dahl. Like Nosberries. Why do I imagine? What no, they think because in, right, in, in, in the whole thing about licking Snozberries on the wall, it was actually the, uh, licking the wallpaper and they because explained it. Because it's just like Snozberries. Yes, but do you know what Snozberries were actually described as in one of the other books? LSD? No, Snozberries oh. were actually balls. Oh, oh shit! Oh yeah, you're like your dingleberries. Yeah, your dingleberries. Oh. Snozberries. So in one of his other books, he explained that snozberries are actually balls, and then in Charlie Chocolate Factory, they were licking balls off the walls. So we're gonna get a very angry letter balls. from what do you call Roald Dahl's estate to say that we're actually yeah. wrong. No, that... uh, if you want to question him, man, he wrote it first. <laughs> None of us. Totally sent us a letter. It is, says it is, he did lick his balls. His granddaughter that is like cooking show. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's the only living doll I know about. <laughs> It's a land of the dolls. <laughs> Living in the land of the dolls. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been another episode of Hype Train, where we digressed and wandered off of the original point, but go and see the BFG. Yes, because the it was destinations amazing. of the Hype Train are not predestined. We don't even live on the reels. No. Nope. No god, no. <laughs> We're a flying train. <laughs> okay. So this has been Dermot Green for Passy Skin and for Hype Train. Thank you very much for watching. This has also been... Real well comfy, thank you. And Ryan. Yeah. Our bit Ryan. Thanks very much, guys. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.